How long should smartphones get software updates through their lifetime? This is a great discussion and this is something that different people have different opinions on. And I thought, you know what, let me drop it in another acapella series talking head video. So let's talk about it. Ben from Lover of Tech, let's go. Now I'm gonna preface this and say this straight off the gate that I think when it comes to software updates length and frequency, it's definitely down to the category of phone that it sits in. Whether it's a low end, mid range, or a high end premium flagship phone, that definitely equates to how many years worth of software updates and how frequent the software updates should be through whether it's the weekly or especially the monthly cycle of the phone's lifespan when you have it. Another point I definitely wanna make is how the phone is also purchased. I firmly believe if the phone can be purchased on a two year contract or more, that should also be the length of time that you should be getting updates for it, especially when it comes to security updates. Let's start with the flagship high-end phones because I know that's the most popular category. And we're gonna use a couple of examples. Let's start with the gold standard of the company that does the best software updates through lifecycle, regardless of how poor the hardware physically slows down on the phone. Yes, that's Apple. Apple pretty much guarantees you on the high end when you buy the latest iPhone from that year, you're pretty much guaranteed to be getting software updates for the next four to five years. And whether the average consumer that we always refer to never does software updates or not, the thing on the principle is the fact that they can supply nearly half a decade worth of software updates. That's nothing short of impressive. Whether you decide to press the update button or not, or you've got the automatic updates button set, in your settings to be able to do it regardless that's impressive now we can look at it from is it worth it based on how much the phone might slow down or not end of the day whether you're getting security patches or new features the support that comes with that it's very impressive and on a high end level that's something that should be commended and that's the gold standard even when you're looking at phones like the iPhone SE, iPhone SE uses an old school design with newer internals from 2019 ending for Apple's latest system on the chips and guaranteed you because of that system on the chip, even with how poor the battery is based on reviews that I've seen, you're gonna be getting software updates on that phone for at least four to five years and that's impressive. But then there are some Android manufacturers in the flagship scene that haven't necessarily had the best track record for long-term software updates. And yes, you probably guessed it. Samsung and LG are probably companies that are culprits for this. Let's go a couple of years back to when the original Pixel first generation came out. That year that it came out, you had the most popular Android flagship phone out at the time, which was the Galaxy S7 series. And if you look at the software update cycle, the Google Pixel, the first generation has Android 10 tell me what software the S7 series is running. Yeah, I'll wait. Most likely nowhere near what the Google Pixel has. And that's a shame when it comes to a flagship phone. Now I would say in conclusion for the high-end flagship phones, for the fact that you buy them on contract and you have them for two years, definitely minimum, and I mean the bare minimum, has to be two years of software updates in terms of major ones and timely monthly security updates. You then need to at least add a minimum one more year to it if most people, and most people do look after their phones very well before they change it over. Most people have a two year contract, have it for one year on a Simone, and then if the phone really starts to slow down or they want a new phone, then they upgrade. I've seen some people even stretch having those type of flagship phones for four years. So for me personally, top end flagship phones, you need to be looking at somewhere between three to five years when it comes to software updates. Now the story and the narrative kind of changes when it debates in the category of premium mid ranges or mid range to low end phones. Now I'm going to use TCL as an example because funny enough, again, I'm based in the UK and I didn't actually realize that TCL were bringing their smartphones on one of the major carriers in the UK, which is EE. So that already changes the narrative and most of the reviews of the TCL 10L as well as the TCL 10 Pro, TCL did announce that they were only guaranteeing one year of major software updates and that brought a certain uproar in the community 
and it changed the whole landscape. Again, from what I know, they went back in their word and they guaranteed that now they will be bringing two years of software updates. And it's a premium mid-range phone. And when you're putting pro to the name, regardless of the price, you kind of have to commit to it. So I think there, the narrative changes. But then in that same category, when you look at the pricing, if you look at Samsung's A-series range, most of the time their A-series range phones don't get anywhere near the amount of software updates that we expect you get on a flagship. Most of the time, it's one major software update if you're lucky with an additional year of security updates. And that is where it changes. Is that still acceptable knowing that you can still buy these phones on contract? A lot of people buy these phones on a monthly contract over two years. Don't you think that they deserve the two year software updates with an additional one year of security updates when it comes to it. And most of the time, when we're looking at the low end phones, the really, really low end phones, yes, you can buy them on contract, but when you're looking at your A20 series, the phones that are 200 pounds or less, most of the time people buy those phones as a first phone for their you know, children or just a cheap burner phone to have on the side, but with internet and smart connectivity. And with those kind of phones, it's kind of a given that you might not even get a year's worth of major software updates because those phones are really bogged down when it comes to the performance. Software updates are important. And again, we always use this term that the average consumer wouldn't notice or doesn't care. And I think sometimes that's an insult to the average consumer just because they're average doesn't mean they're not spending their hard earned money for a service that should be there to make sure that their phone gets the best features and the best security support throughout the lifespan so that they can have the best experience. That's kind of the argument I make, but I know that this scape of how many years you should be getting a software update definitely is category based, but I'll say as a general rule of thumb, two years is a bare minimum for any category I personally believe. And especially when you're coming into the high-end phones that are north of a thousand or more, boy, there needs to be an investment on making sure that the software updates really hold up over time and they should be pushing for somewhere between three to five years. Again, on the Android scene, in that flagship scene, I would say companies like Google definitely lead the pack and also OnePlus not being far behind at all. That about wraps it up with this one. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. These talking head acapella videos with these topics, it's not about right or wrong. It's about getting perspective, sharing mine, hearing your thoughts in the comment section below so we can have a discussion because things can be different based on your demographic, the country, the devices that are available, your budget and the category and what your experience has been in the past for your expectations for now into the future. So don't hold back. Let's have a discussion in the comment section below. Again, this is your host, Ben from the Lover of Tech channel. If you like videos like this, you know exactly what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're part of Team TLS, the Tech Lover Squad. Hit me in the comments, hit that like button, share, comment, and make sure you're safe during this time. Peace until the next one.